Biggest thing Carlo needs to address this offseason. Just coming off winning La Liga and the Champions League. But what is the biggest thing Carlo needs to address this offseason? There's a few. I don't know if I can pick just one. Um, I think we have to put ourselves in a position next season that is less reliant on Courtois saving our ass. So what does that mean? Like as much as I hate the whole narratives of Real Madrid were lucky, I don't believe in that. I believe very firmly in Diego Simeone's quote where he says, the team that wins deserves to win. There is no luck involved. And every champion has luck anyway. And Real Madrid deserved to be there and they were better than all their opponents. And they outperformed their XG fine. And I don't want to discuss it again. I've discussed it a lot. But I do think this team is talented enough, especially with the additions next season of players like Rudiger, maybe Chuomeni, and who else? I'm I'm 100 percent sure it won't be it won't be just that. Given the fact that I think Real Madrid will make more signings, they have three players coming off the books, etc. I strongly believe this team is too talented to be getting put on the ropes as consistently as they get put on the ropes. And I think that starts with, it starts with fixing the press. And I think while we can argue some of the older players can't press as that's been explained to us, I also think beyond the physical aspect of it, there were structural problems to the press early on and not just physical aspects of the press. When we were pressing early in the season, we were scoring a bunch of goals and conceding a bunch of goals. The problem with the press wasn't that players were getting tired. The, pl the problem was that it wasn't cohesive. I think this team can have a good pressing system, and especially given the fact that I imagine Kamavinga and Fetty will play more. It doesn't have to be reliant on Modric and, and co. Um, so there, that's one thing. That's the structure. Uh, the, the biggest, apart from that, I think the biggest question that has to be answered next season and this is jumping the gun a little bit, and I feel uncomfortable saying it because it's not uh, something that is official, but I'm just saying it. I think you have to figure out a way to incorporate Chu many next season in a meaningful way and not put him on the bench. And the reason I'm saying that is because Carlo reportedly called Chu many today to convince him that he has a role because Chu many was reportedly worried about that aspect of it because we have so many midfielders. What Carlo could have possibly said in that phone call to him, I have no idea to convince him because what is he going to say? Well, like, yeah, you're going to start over Casemiro. He's not going to say that. I mean, I, I think what he would have probably said was that we believe in you. I think you're going to be an important player. You're not going to start necessarily just because we're signing you for a big price. You'll have to earn it. But incorporating him, I think, will be important to the way we play because Casemiro's style of play... I put it on my Twitter thread today. I'm analyzing every single player in the squad, 1 to 25. And what I said about Casemiro was that um, while I've been critical of his on-ball ability in many years in the past um, when he's being pressed, you take his you take his presence out of the team and it's the, the defense just completely melts. So it's a dichotomy. It's a paradox. You need him, but you also could do without him. But you really need him because of the way Real Madrid plays. And if you want to have a better defensive structure uh, or sorry, no, not a better defensive structure, a better overall structure behind the ball and a con and one that can control and press and have a better build-up. I think you're going to have to incorporate Chua many more. So I, I, those are, that's just a couple of things that uh, that I think that, you know, the Chua many thing is not something to improve on, but it's, I think, directly related to my, my point number one, which is that I think this team is too good to be put on the ropes as much as they are. Yeah, I don't have too much to add to that. I think maybe just building off your second point, there's going to be four competitions that we're in now um, because we're now in the Club World Cup. And then you plug in a World Cup, an actual World Cup in the winter, um, followed by the Super Cup like immediately after that, I think. It's just a ton of competition, ton of mileage, ton of traveling. I think we're going to need a bigger squad next season. I think you have to account for if Kareem Benzema goes down or if he just runs out of form. Um, 
I think these things have to be like Casimir, same thing with Casimir. There's been no natural replacement to a many would be a natural replacement. So I think these things have to be accounted for. I worry about the right back position. I think, um, I think the club probably feels Carvajal and Lucas Vasquez are enough now after Carvajal's turnaround in form. But I just, it's, it's so hard to bank on Carvajal who will be turning 31. And yes, he, he proved himself at the tail end of the season. I thought he was absolutely phenomenal in the final and one of his best performances for years, but I just don't know if you can count on him for a full season. And so um, I just think there's, there's gaps in the squad that, that need to be, definitely need to be um, taken care of heading into a season where we have so many games and uh, there's just going to be a lot on the schedule. Also, the, the next FIFA World Club, World Club World Cup is in China. It's like just going across the... Also, I think Qatar, the preseason... So they go to World Cup in Qatar, China, Super Cup in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> preseason in the United States before that, before the season yeah. starts. It's just... And right now, it's the Nations League. What? Like, what? The se- I thought the season's <laughs> over. What is this, man? Yeah. This, there's, no, there's no such Kevin thing as Kevin De Bruyne awesome. called it out. He said it's so pointless. Did you see that? I didn't see that, no. Yeah, he basically said. said they're glorified friendlies. Like, the season is supposed to just be over right now. Like, we just had yeah. the Champions League final. What's going on? All of a sudden, we have to post news of, like, Eden Hazard quotes while on international <laughs> duty. International duty? He was just he was just celebrating the Champions League final. Yeah. Like, two Rams are interested in Raheem Sterling, who has 12 months up in his current deal. Would you do it? Um... I think I would. Um, but that being said, it's a question of how much does this deal cost us? And two, if we're comparing it to like Serge Nabry, do I take Raheem Sterling over Serge Nabry? I don't I don't know. I think I prefer Nabry. And if I do, what do the economics of each deal look like? Like what is I think you'd have to kind of compare and contrast that way. Um, but I do like Sterling. I do think he's a, a really good player. It'd be interesting to see how he would fit um, at Real Madrid and at this stage of his career. He's kind of been phased out a little bit at City, so it does it does it does make sense. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I still prefer Nabry. He is my favorite of these quote unquote realistic options. He's 26 still. I mean, it's it's and I think he is a better player than Raheem Sterling. Uh, and he's while Sterling can play on the right, he's Gnabry is the more natural right winger where it's less forced. But Sterling's also only 27, and he's really damn good. Sterling Sterling's played as a false nine before too. Hasn't he, he he can play that role as well. Yeah. Um, and his his age, he's he's theoretically. It, like in his peak or heading in his peak right now. Well, if you remember, uh, Jose, when we did that podcast, talked about kind of hitting that type of player in the age curve, like the 26, 27 year olds. We don't have enough of those. Yeah. So he does. I mean, they both, both those players we just mentioned fit that. I also think I have a concern about Rodrigo's development. But at the same time, I think we should, as much as we could, milk his superstar super sub bench role as long as we can because i think he's still young enough that we can take advantage of that and i also think even if he's in that first role off the bench he's going to play a lot anyway he's going to he's going there's going to be a lot of games where he'll just start whether it's through rotation or whether it's through injury suspension or whatever i i i actually sterling wasn't on my radar but when i thought about it after i saw that report i actually think he would be a good sign he, but Nabry will still be number one for me. Yeah, yeah I'm saying. in the same boat. Yeah. All right. I think this was a great edition of Tuesday Tapas. I think this Tuesday is what, Tapas. Tuesday Tapas. <laughs> this is what it's all about. We're just having tapas. It's you know some of this, some of that, a <laughs> little bit of this discussion, a little bit of that. Uh, so.